It's Platt, and today we head to Nebraska. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. Well, the particular beer we have today is the Alpha Modern IPA. It comes to us from Zipline Brewing. Zipline Brewing, a uh, little background, is based in Lincoln, Nebraska, which uh, I believe is the capital. Um, Zipline was founded in 2012 by three gentlemen, Marcus Powers, Tom Wellmouth, and James Gallatin. Now, I believe Tom and James were more the kind of financial backers, more kind of the hands-off partners, where Marcus was the original brewer when they first started. Uh, today, they've kind of grown to the point where Marcus stepped back from head brewer, and they hired a gentleman named uh, Brendan McGinn, who is now the current head brewer there. I guess Marcus now has more time to kind of run the facility. He was the first quote-unquote employee as far as who set up the brewery, brewed the first batches, that kind of stuff. Uh, Zip Line has four different locations. Uh, they have their main brewery and a beer hall, or I mean, main brewery and beer hall in uh, Lincoln, where, where the company's based at. And then they have a separate uh, tap room and zip line beer hall in Omaha. And uh, those two are the largest cities in Nebraska. So it kind of makes sense. Um, I didn't see anywhere where they have a restaurant or whatever. They may do the food truck thing, but I didn't see anything online referencing like a food menu or anything like that. Um, Zipline also, too, has their own uh, merchandise page, which all these breweries have. One thing I like about on their merchandise deck, though, they do have, like, you know, regular swag, you know, shirts, pint glasses, hats, stuff like that. But they have an old-school beer light, and uh, I always thought those were fascinating. If you're of a certain age, I'm going to say mid-40s and older, you'll remember the old-school neon beer lights that would hang, you know, back behind a bar, uh, your old Miller High Life. Coors Original, Ham, Strolls, Paps, Blue Ribbon. And uh, we had a couple of those in, in a basement I, where we lived uh, as a kid, and I always thought those were kind of cool to have. Um, I've always kind of wanted to buy one. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll go ahead and buy one. But they have, Zipline has their own variation of it, and I think that's really cool. So maybe something you check out on the website. Real quick, let's talk about some of the beers. Uh, the first beer is called Local Time. It is an American lager, 4% alcohol by volume, an easy drinker. Uh, this is something I've talked about in a, uh, in a couple of videos lately where the breweries have done their kind of take on a Bud Miller course style beer. Probably a little more flavorful, probably a little more hops, or, you know, a little more body, a little more hops, but uh, still for that Miller like, Coors light drinker out there which i think is great I, I you know I've, I've talked in other videos about the snobbery sometimes a craft beer and i think making those type of beer realizing hey there's just a segment of people and especially i can imagine in, in nebraska that just like good old american lagers so i thought that was real cool next is their oatmeal porter six percent alcohol by volume uh, doing a little research that from i gather this is the first beer they produced uh part of the reasoning was that marcus felt and it's something if you get into brewing and home brewing you realize the darker beers the maltier the kind of heavier beers they're a little more forgiving if you're off on fermentation temperatures or hop addition stuff like that you don't notice the mistakes but a, a beer like an american light lager uh you notice it if you screw up your fermentation temperature if you know you screw up the yeast you know you over pitch a yeast or anything like that it really sticks on those lighter beers so they started with the oatmeal porter kind of wanting to make sure they nailed a beer that they could be fairly consistent with and i, I thought that was kind of unique and kind of i like the fact that he was open about that like hey you know we're starting out and i'm, I'm just <laughs> you know i'm worried about this so i thought that was kind of neat uh next they have a beer called white stout now white is not necessarily have to do with the color uh, but referred to as White Stout. It's part of their 750 series. It uh, has hints of vanilla, coffee, coca. Um, again, if you're kind of uh, a guy like me that kind of likes darker, maltier beers, that sounds like something you definitely want to jump into. And last but not least, uh, they have a bourbon, bourbon barrel age series, which most of these breweries do. But they have a bourbon barrel age, what they call as a calavera. It is a Russian Imperial Stout that is infused with cocoa nibs, uh, vanilla, cinnamon, and they also use five different types of chili peppers. Now, this is some, a trend I've seen in the last few years is 
beers produced with chili peppers. I don't like the lighter lagers, the, you know, Corona style cerveza beers that have the pepper in it. I, I just don't think those beers are big enough to hold up flavor wise to the power of a, a chili pepper. But darker beers, like I said, your porters, your stouts, Russian Imperial stouts, I think they have enough backbone and enough maltiness where that pepper really brings a nice balance, especially your smoky type peppers, your ancho and your uh, chipotle style peppers. If you like mole sauce, that's a good example of combining the chocolate and sweet with the peppery and the smokiness. And I've tasted some really good beer. So that sounds like something that I would definitely want to check out. Well, before we try this beer though, let's check out the stats. So today I thought we'd talk a little bit about Nebraska itself, uh, not necessarily a hotbed of craft brewing and, uh, you know, probably not one of those places that's a real tourist destination. So I thought we'd talk about a little bit of Nebraska. Uh, like I said earlier, Lincoln is the capital of Nebraska, also where the home of Zipline is. The uh, state was founded in 1867, a couple years after the Civil War. Um, Nebraska is the only state that's unicameral. If you don't know what that means, it just means one legislative body instead of a House and Senate like the U.S. Congress and most other states do two houses. They just have one. And uh, if this is a way to cut down on politicians, I am <laughs> definitely all for it. Uh, Omaha is the largest city in Nebraska. It's home to Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway. He's also known as the Oracle of Omaha. So. Any of you investing nerds out there uh, definitely know about Warren and Omaha. Um, real quick, fun little fact I found, and uh, if there's anything we can thank Nebraska for, it's probably this. Kool-Aid was invented there in 1927. So you fine folks in Nebraska, thank you very much. You <laughs> have helped us out. Uh, and one last little fact. This is something I heard years ago, so I don't know if it's 100% still true today or not, but I always thought it was a fascinating fact. Saturday afternoons in the fall when the University of Nebraska plays their football games there in Lincoln, the stadium that holds its one, you know, massive college stadiums, and I think they've renovated and remodeled and, you know, added on to through the years, but I want to say it holds at least 80,000, if not more people, when they pack it and they do every Nebraska game, that if that stadium itself was a city, it would be the third largest city in Nebraska behind Lincoln and Omaha. I just always found that quite unique. Uh, so enough about Nebraska. Let's try this beer from Nebraska. Pretty nice pour, a little bit of haze to it. Nice white head on it. You know, a little bit of haze, it's actually all right. Let's give her, oh yeah, plenty of those classic West Coast, you know, the Cascade, Chinook style hops. Let's give her a try. Oh man, that's just nice, that's a nice little beer right there. Um. Hot bitterness is there. It's starting to hit a little bit later. Body-wise, this I'm gonna say medium minus. Um, yeah, me, me, medium minus. Not not medium body. Uh, very drinkable beer. Um, IP or uh, alcohol-wise, it's only in the mid five. So actually, for an IPA, it's a little on the lower end, which makes this again very very drinkable beer. Um, I'm not a huge IPA guy, which I've said before, but Man, this is something I could really drink on a on a nice, you know, spring day, late spring day or a warm day. Um, not a lot of malt on the on the tongue, as something I will say. Um, again, IPAs have always been kind of so well. They're a little bit bigger beer, usually higher IPA. Again, this one has a little lighter body water, but but more kind of a thirst quenching IPA, which I'm I'm all for. Um, Yeah, nice, nice, well executed, very drinkable, approachable IPA. Uh, this bird will tell you. Um, overall, good beer. Sorry about the bird again. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. 
If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Until next time, bottoms up.